Now let us explore some of the logical functions in Excel. First, let us take a quick glance of a list of available functions that would be under the formulas menu and the logical section. And here is the list and false, if, if error, if any, ifs, not, or, switch, true, XOR. Now, a couple of these functions would be recently introduced in Office 2019. And so they may not be compatible. For example, the switch function may not be compatible with the older versions of Excel and instead could return an error. So first, to begin with, I would like to touch base on the basic binary operations of Excel. So Excel understands the language of true and false. And if you were to put this in a binary format, then it would be in the form of one and zero. So there is no right or wrong, pass or fail, correct, incorrect, yes or no, none of these. Excel always returns the value in the form of true or false. So now, what if in case I want to see whether it's pass or fail? Let us say I have a score over here in economics. I scored 60 and in statistics, I scored 55. All right, now I would like to know whether my overall scores are greater than or equal to 50. So I say passing score is 50. Now I would pass if I score 50 or above in both the subjects. So ideally, I would use the if function and under the if function, first I would test economics. Is it greater than or equal to 50? Well, if it is true, then I need to check the other one. That is another if to see if 55 is greater than or equal to 50. And if this is true, then I return as pass or else I return as fail. Now that's the end of the innermost if function. Now we come back outside. This is the function to be executed if the expression or the result of this expression is true. But what if it is not true? Then I need to again show as fail. Why? If economics is not greater than or equal to 50, then there is no point of checking whether statistics is greater than or equal to 50 because the student has already failed. So here we have this as pass or fail. Now that's great. But here we have two layers of a function. Now just imagine if there were five subjects, we would have had five layers of the if function. Now that's quite painful at times. So Excel gives us another beautiful function called as AND. Now what does this AND function do? Here under the AND function, you can test multiple criteria at the same time and it would give you a consolidated or combined result. That's a single result that you get. That's in the form of true or false. Let me show you how. I say equal and is 60 greater than or equal to 50. That's one condition to be tested. Comma is 55 greater than or equal to 50. Now you see if there are three more subjects, I can add similar kind of tests or logical tests for three more subjects as well. And I can go on for maybe well over 100 as well such test cases. So I'll just close this bracket and see if it is coming out fine. Yes, it is true. Now, what if I did not score 55, but I scored 48 in statistics? You see, overall I have failed and the AND function also returns as false. So this function works perfectly. But now the thing is here, at least the IF function helps me get the result in the form of pass or fail. But in this case, it only returns as false. And if I were to get this in a binary format, then I just need to multiply it with one. So if the result of the AND function is true, then anything multiplied by true, the answer will be the number itself. And if anything multiplied with false, remember false represents zero. That means anything multiplied to zero, the final result would be zero itself. So you get this in a binary format. 
but I would like to instead get it in a form of pass or fail. Now how does this work? For this, let us quickly understand how the if function works. I will copy this function here and paste it here. So for the if function, first it checks the outermost function is c6 greater than or equal to c9. Now what happens? I say, let's say here, c6 greater than or equal to c9. What is the result? It's true. So what is Excel doing in the next step? Excel will have this function over here and instead replace c6 greater than c9 by true. Why? Because we know that c6 greater than c9 is true. So this expression is replaced with the result of this expression that is either in the form of true or false. And then the if function observes this and checks. So if this is true over here, then the if function will execute whatever has been mentioned within this section that is value if true. That's the middle section. And in case if it were not true, that means, for example, if we were testing 48 to be greater than or equal to 50, the answer would have been false. So the result would have been something like this then. If false. So if it is false over here, then Excel will not execute the next if function. Rather, it will directly come on to the fail function. Fail. Rather, it would directly respond as fail. And that is how Excel works. Any test condition that you put over here, it will always return the result in the form of true or false. And based on whatever is mentioned over here, Excel or rather the if function will execute the appropriate part of the function. That could be either under value if true or value under false. So we now understand for if function, it just needs true or false. It doesn't care how many conditions you're testing. It's just that the function takes one condition at a time, but ultimately it's not one condition, but it takes one result. It can test only one result at a time. So then now I wonder, how about putting something like this? And function returns the result in the form of true or false. If function also understands the language of true or false. So how about combining both these functions? So I'll have something like if and then and 60 greater than or equal to 50 comma 48 greater than or equal to 50. I close the bracket. Now, if and returns the value of the result as true, then what to do? I say declare as pass. But what if it is false? Then I say declare as fail and close the bracket. Now this is much more leaner and simpler. We hit enter and see it's a fail. Now compare this function against this function over here. As of now, it looks more or less of the same length. But just imagine if there were five subjects, you would have had five layers of if functions and not to tell you about the complexities of matching the closing brackets against each of these functions, it gets more cumbersome and very difficult to map to. There is high chance of getting errors as well. But this one is quite simple, clean and easy. What would happen here? The AND function will test this case and we know that this one is not true so and checks is the first one true okay and then checks the next one is it true no false so as a result overall the and function returns the result as false so this function gets substituted or replaced with false now if false then fail and if true then pass so if function does not understand any of these conditions or comparisons, all it understands is what is mentioned over here. Is it true or false? And and function just supplies that to the if function here. So this thing helps me prevent multiple layers of if functions and and function just gives me that. Similarly, we have another function called or function. Now or function works slightly different well, if we were to say that it's okay, even if the student would have cleared in at least one subject, 
just mark him as pass for now and you know allow him to or just promote him to the next level and allow him to re-attempt this exam and clear it. This generally happens at the university level wherein they allow the student to proceed further to the next semester or to the next class but they need to come back to re-attempt this particular subject or the paper. So how does the OR function work? I say OR is 60 greater than or equal to 50, comma is 48 greater than or equal to 50. So the format of the AND function and OR function is exactly the same. There is no difference in the format. It's just that the function name is different and also the nature in which it calculates. So we see OR function returns true. Now what exactly happened here? Let me give you a quick quote over here. So AND function returns true only when all conditions are true. Let me fix that. True. Okay. Which means it returns false if there is at least one false condition, right? So only and only when you have every condition returning as true, that is when and function returns the res final result as true. But of all the set of functions or all the set of conditions that you are testing, even if there is at least one incorrect or a false attempt or a false condition, then Overall, the AND function returns the result as false. Well, on the other hand, the OR function does slightly different. It returns true when there is at least one true condition. And so it will return false only when all conditions are false. Now this is something which you need to remember very well. So it tests condition 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 20, 30, 40. Or function will check if there is at least one function or if there is at least one condition which returns as true then the or function will return the overall result as true. But if all the results are false then the OR function also returns the result as false. Now that's exactly opposite with the AND function. It returns true only when all conditions are true and false if there is at least one false condition. Now similarly, there is also XOR function. Now this is one such function probably you might be using rarely. So it returns true when not all the conditions are true or false and then returns false when all conditions are either true or false just as it says it returns false only when all the conditions are returns the same result that is either true or false but XOR or exclusive OR is it returns true when there is no consistency in results some might return as true some might return as false so when you do not see a consistent or a unanimous true or a false across that is when XOR returns as true now this is something very rarely you might be using and generally in algorithmic approach or any algorithms that you want to prepare it is during that time that you might come across the usage of this function but most commonly for our convenience what we can use would be the AND and the OR function and how we can use it best it's by we can also embed this within the IF function and rather having than having multiple IF functions we can just have it as a simple AND function now this is like certain scenarios or certain part of academics wherein they say 
you are deemed to be failed if you fail in at least one subject. Of all the subjects, if you fail in at least one, you are overall considered to be failed. That is when AND function works. But the OR function, in case of most universities, what they say is, even though you would have passed in one subject, you might be allowed to attempt or attend the next semester, provided that you reattempt the backlogs or the subjects which you did not clear earlier. So the OR function helps you just do that. Maybe out of 100 functions or 100 conditions that you are testing, 99 might be failed or false, but one is correct or true. That is when OR returns true. That means it will clear it off. So once again, a quick revisit and this is very critical because your flow with or your comfort level with working with Excel and advanced calculations would be be very much dependent on how well you understand the usage of the AND OR function and also the IF function and some more of the logical operators. And more important, you need to understand that Excel returns the responses in the form of true or false. Well, there is a possibility that you might not see the result of true or false just like in this case. In this function over here, you see the AND function returns true or false but we do not see that because if it, it is within the if function and all will get the result would be pass or fail. But Excel is doing this calculation or Excel is doing working on this and returns the result to the if function and if function processes it and then gives us final result. If you were to represent true or false in a binary format, then true represents one, false represents zero.